Welcome to Ion Franchising, where you will learn the A to Z's of franchising. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fabulous episode of Ion Franchising. I am your host, Lance Gralick. So today's episode might be a little rough, 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 rough. Get it? Get it? Well, I'm going to tell you what's going to go on shortly. So this amazing woman, is the brand president of a hot brand in the pet space of all things, but I think you figured that out by now. And uh, this is an incredibly fast growing brand. We're gonna hear about her. We're gonna hear about the success of this brand and possibly you being interested in joining it. So welcome to the show, my friend, Miss Danita Karani, the brand president of Pet Wands. Welcome, Danita. It's so great to be here, Lance. Growl, Lick. That's it. See, Growl like see, a bear, lick like see, a lollipop. What, see what I did? It's great to be here today. <laughs> well, now that we got all the dog references out of the way, um, so awesome to have you. You know, uh, the pet business is hot. Start off by telling us what Pet Wants is, because some listeners are not going to know. They don't have one near them, even though there's 140 locations already. Absolutely. I'll be glad to. So Pet Wants is a pet health and nutrition brand. We focus on uh, fresh pet food. We manufacture our own pet food uh, that we deliver to our franchisees fresh every six to eight weeks so that it is hitting pets bowls in weeks rather than months. Uh, most of our franchisees are also carry a wide variety of fresh made treats and chews, supplements that, that help our pets live longer, be happier, be healthier. Many are adding grooming to their line of services as well. So we have happy and healthy pets in a wide variety of ways. That is absolutely awesome. So how did Danita end up in the world of franchising? You know, I always, I always joke with my guests that, you know, there are people that want to be an astronaut, a firefighter, a lawyer, a teacher, a doctor. I don't know that anybody says when they're young, I want to be in the franchise business. I think that'll change down the road. But at the moment, we, uh, through happenstance, lab accidents, something environmental, we get into franchising. So what's your story? Yeah, well, I, I you, you hit on one of those. I left high school. I was going to be a lawyer. Uh, I was told that I could talk really well and I should go to law school. Or I argue, possibly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was pretty good at arguing. I was pretty persuasive. Uh, so I went to college and then decided that uh, that was way too long in school for me. Uh, and so I, uh, you know, went into business um, and found myself uh, being pretty successful in the business world. Uh, really didn't have a whole lot of idea of what a franchise was. Uh, but at one point in time, started a business that was not part of a franchise system. Uh, so had a completely independent business uh, that I owned and operated for seven years and then successfully sold that business to a large company, went to work for big corporate America that then got bought by the bigger company, uh, continued that path, but knew I missed being in business for myself. That entrepreneurial spirit was really talking to me. And so when I was preparing to leave corporate America, I knew I wanted that support. So that's how I got into franchising. And so as I prepared my exit strategy from corporate America, I found a franchise consultant and I said, help me figure out how can I buy a franchise and get into a business where there's a playbook, where there's somebody that can help me know what to do, when to do it. Somebody's already done the marketing for me. They've already figured out the computer system for me. And I don't have to do every little thing myself. And that I could bet on myself without doing everything for myself. So that's how I ended up in franchising. I was a franchisee first before I became part of a franchisor. I love it. I love it. So you've done it all. So you've I seen have, both, both sides of the fence. Absolutely. I was a franchisee for 10 years uh, and then became part of the franchisor for that brand uh, before I came over here to Pet Once. And what brand was that? Are we allowed to say? 
we are allowed to say. So when I joined that brand, uh, it was called College Nannies and Sitters in the premium oh. childcare space. Yes. Now, a year ago, they rebranded. It's now called Jovi, which is childcare reimagined. Um, I uh, love the brand, still stay in touch with my great, great friends over there. Um, they've done a remarkable job with their rebrand. Uh, but this opportunity here at Pet Once really spoke to me. Uh, my career arc has been phenomenal. I served the elderly and the disabled in the early part of my career. Then it was children and their parents. And now it's pet and pet parents. So what better career can somebody have than serving all three of those demographics, right? Absolutely. And you know what's so exciting about everything you're talking about in your background is those are obviously amazing things in franchising. Everything kid related, everything pet related, everything everybody, elderly related, right? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody started whispering, uh, "There's a recession coming," or whatever we call what we might or might not be in at the moment. And uh, but people are always taking care of their kids, their pets, mm -hmm. their parents, mm -hmm. correct, uh, no matter what. So it's an incredible business. Most, so many franchises are what I call recession friendly, if you yes. don't want to believe they're recession proof. So uh, how did you get to Pet Wants? And uh, talk a little bit about that. And then we'll uh, dive into the meat of uh, Pet Wants. Sure, absolutely. So uh, last year, uh, the opportunity was presented to me to, to learn about Pet Wants. And um, it was a brand I had not heard of. Um, as I dug into it, of course, it immediately spoke to this rescue dog mom's heart. Uh, Good I have fit there. Absolutely fell in love with, with, with the nutrition piece, with the passion piece. And as I got to know the team here at Pet Once and learned about the passion of our franchise owners and why our franchise owners choose our brand, um, it really spoke to me. Uh, and then as I learned on the economic side, what you just talked about, the, 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 the tremendous amount of growth, what is we've already seen in the last five years and what is projected to happen in the next 10, the, the economics are stunning, uh, the, the growth in the pet industry. And so when I combined the, the passion piece the personal connection to pets for me with the economic opportunity. It's a perfect fit. Love it. So let's uh, dive into the, you mentioned economics. So uh, investment wise, what is the investment? How big is this facility? Uh, as you mentioned earlier, um, you know, there was an initial vision, like with any brand, whether it's Starbucks or Pet Wants, there's an initial vision. And then as you grow, things change yep, for the better, absolutely. of course. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, there we're a young brand. We're in our eighth year of franchising. But as you mentioned, we already have 140 units. We have 100 franchisees. So I think that speaks to just the attraction of the brand, right? Uh, to already have 100 franchisees as, as you're going into your eighth year. Our franchisee is 42.5, which is very uh, achievable for most people. Um, our total investment is between 130 and 200,000, depending upon where you're located. Um, and that's really spread out over your first year. So most of our franchisees start their journey in our mobile model. So they come to training, they really get their education, they understand how to run their business, they understand the nutrition of our products, they understand their marketing strategies. And then they, they go out and they introduce themselves to their communities in uh, farmer's markets and community events and in their our online platforms so that they're really becoming integrated with their communities. And they begin to generate revenue, they generate community presence, they generate customer loyalty while they're looking for securing their real estate footprint and begin their build out. So that's really different from other uh, retail models where you don't start generating any revenue until that retail build out is done, right? Right, and right. So we combined that ability to begin your journey in your business while you're still, you're getting that retail footprint built out. 
I love it. So uh, does anybody have a food truck associated with this or is it? Uh... You know, we actually do have a couple of folks that have taken an Airstream trailer. I have one in Jacksonville Beach and one in San Francisco that have taken an Airstream trailer and retrofitted it. And the one in Jack's Beach actually has a permanent parking spot. Uh, the one in, in San Francisco moves theirs around, but they open the doors and folks come in and buy their products right out of the Airstream. So, so you can start, you can trademark quickly, diner for dogs. I love it. I love it. That's great. <laughs> No, that's that's fantastic. So uh, and I love the idea of the of the fast ramp up. You know, the number one question I get as a as a franchise broker consultant is Lance, you know, I trust you. So X, Y, Z brand, what do you think the ramp up period is like? When do I start? You know, when do I at least break even? Sure. You know, is it three months? Is it six months? Is it, you know, a few years? And to hear that you have, you know, a mobile model to start is is absolutely awesome it's a great idea so are they delivering in the mobile you mentioned farmers markets but is there deliveries going on also and there's deliveries going on even after they open their retail location so yeah. one of the great recurring revenue pieces of our model is subscriptions and it. folks will they will sign up to have food a certain amount of food delivered to them every four weeks every six weeks and it gets delivered by their uh, custom wrapped vehicle so they're you know they're advertising their pet once business every time they drive down the street uh, and so that's part of their recurring revenue model is those automatic subscriptions on delivery. It's a doggy meal prep program, it just is, like the humans sure. have. That's right. You know, <laughs> my Hello Fresh box came yesterday, so this is the same kind of concept, except it's for the doggies. I love it. That is absolutely fantastic. So now you're adding other services. Before it was it was food and treats and what have you. Are 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 your franchisees um, making any of this stuff in store? Or it's all from your commissary kitchen, so to speak. So that's a fantastic question, Lance. So they actually do make some of the products in store. So we manufacture, we, we have a relationship with a pet food manufacturer that manufactures the kibble, our private labeled kibble. Um, gotcha. But our low, we also have uh, relationships with vendors that private label many of our treats that are pet once only treats, but our franchisees, do have the ability to make uh, jerky fresh in their stores. And it's Pet Once jerky that they make in their stores. They also make what we call spa products, S-P-A-W products. Uh, we have balms for paws uh, that are aggravated by uh, asphalt or cold weather or hot weather. Uh, calming sprays for skin that gets aggravated or allergy conditions. Uh, and we teach our franchisees how to make all of those, how to sell all of those. So they are making some of the things right there in their locations. I love it. And that certainly will keep the cost down. So you can pass you got on. it. Absolutely. Very, it does. Very fair price. You know, I've been in the restaurant business. So as much as you can make, you know, keeping it consistent is awesome. That's but right. Keeping it simple. Yes, very, very simple processes. Uh, we, you know, we provide them with a, a great list of vendors to acquire the, the different ingredients from. So it's really simple for them. So the new stuff being added. Let's talk about that. Yeah, this is so exciting. So we started this uh, about a year ago. We have an R&D store right around the corner from our corporate offices so that we could really roll this out learn from it so we can share it with our new franchisees as well as existing ones that want to add this. But so, we've added so I'm sorry, that so that's a corporate store? Corporate store. In, yep. in Ohio? In Ohio, literally five minutes here from the corporate office. Um, really, and it was crucial because we were adding grooming services to our menu of, of options to offer to consumers. And it was so important that we at corporate really understood that, right? You, you can't write an ops manual on something that you haven't done. 
<laughs> so, so we needed to do it. And so it's been such a great journey to understand what are consumers looking for with grooming? How do you find groomers? How do you train groomers? How do you schedule your grooming services? Um, how do you make money at grooming? And what we have found about grooming is a couple of things. Number one, you don't have to have the same level of retail space to attract people to grooming. It's a destination. People will find you and come to a less expensive retail location for grooming. So you can spend less on your location if you're doing grooming. Number two, as soon as they walk in the location for grooming, you have the opportunity to educate them on the nutrition of your food, to sell them on your treats and shoes and on your supplements, and to turn them into a long-term food customer. Same thing happens if they come in to buy your food. Now you have the opportunity to turn them into a grooming customer. So you have multiplied your cross-selling and revenue streams and the grooming services what we ask our franchisees to focus on is making sure that they're generating enough profit margin on their grooming services to cover the entire overhead of their physical location so that all of the profit they're making on their products is pure profit. Sounds like there's a heck of a strategic plan behind all this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it goes back to what is so important about a franchise. I have people ask me all the time, you know, should I do my own thing? Should I do a franchise? And I always tell people, just like you have done, and I've set up my own company as well and spent all the time to wear every hat imaginable and make my own mistakes and spend extra time and money. I always tell people, look, if you're passionate about something and you feel like you have, you, you have to do something, create your own business, go for it. But in most cases, most people don't have that sort of passion or burning desire to give birth to a concept. So the question becomes, which franchise is best for you? And let's talk about that. So if you're going to take a cross section, you have 140 locations, 100 or so franchisees, your top 15 franchisees, the best. Who are they? Where do they come from? What do they all share in common? Besides, so that I hope they like pets. <laughs> they, you know, number one is their passion, right? And, and their passion is really twofold. Obviously, they have a passion for pets. Um, they have a passion for education. They have a, and, and they understand the difference between selling and educating. I had the privilege of being in our number two store in the country when she had a customer that had never been in her store before come in. And I had the opportunity to listen to the franchise owner engage that potential new customer in an educational conversation about why that person had come into the store, what her pet's issues were, why she should consider trying this to address those issues, how she should go about introducing it to her pet, she sh when the franchise owner would follow up with her to see how it went. It was about a 10 minute conversation. At no point was she selling anything except right. a solution to what the consumer came into her store to get solved anyway. I love it. And, and you got to witness firsthand why this franchisee is so successful. I absolutely did, right? I absolutely did. And so, you know, the, the things that make our top people successful is they're passionate about pets, they're passionate about education, and they continue to do the things that made them successful in the first place. So they, they continue to move forward with, if it even though they've got their brick and mortar retail locations and, and they're very successful, they continue to do community events, which continue to, to acquire new customers for them, yes. right? They're looking to add a second location or a third location that gives them a bigger footprint in their communities. 
that they, they're not sitting back waiting for more people to find them. They're going out and finding more people. Yeah. Customer service is not a one-time event. It's not. And neither it's is an customer ongoing... acquisition. What was that? Neither is customer acquisition. Exactly. It's just an ongoing process. It never That's ends. Right. And, and the best brands are, are thinking about how to do it better all the time. All the time. Yeah, I love it. So it within the pack of those top franchisees, where did they come from? I mean, what were their occupations? I would imagine it's all across the board. You know, tell me, I'm sure there's, you know, someone that was a teacher, someone might have even been a lawyer, someone was probably an engineer, probably all walks of life, right? So it really is across the board. Uh, I think about um, our number one store, uh, she was uh, left corporate America. She is has a marketing background. Uh, number two is in came from a finance background. Uh, I've got some folks that uh, were in sales. I've got uh, folks that I've got some folks that were in the veterinary world. I've got some folks that uh, were vet techs or groomers or gotcha. dog trainers, right? Um, I have uh, teachers. Uh, Always one teachers. Of, one of our newest franchisees uh, here in Southern Ohio uh, he was a high school math teacher. So education, that was it. That's what attracted him, right? That's his passion. And I can see him absolutely rising to the top of our ranks in, in very quick order. Love it. Yeah. And most people, it's so crazy because most people that are looking at business opportunities, potentially franchises, especially the people I work with, they are sometimes they look at me crazy when I present certain brands to them. And I said, trust me, it, it trust the process. It it fits you. Pets, it's somewhat easier because so many people absolutely love pets. You don't, nobody comes to me and says, oh, I absolutely love the air conditioning, refrigeration or heating <laughs> business. Right? No, it's not a fun sounding business. Not everything is a sexy business, but I tell people, Money is sexy. And if you can do something you really like, especially in the world of pets, like you guys have an incredible offer. So uh, opportunity for the right people. But so talk about your selection process. I tell people all the time, franchising is a two way street. It's a it team is. sport. You have to like them. They have to like you. So if I referred somebody to you, how does that process look? How long does it generally take? Give me the sort of the big milestones throughout the process. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our discovery process really is, um, you know, from introductory to one of our uh, sales directors to what we call meet the pack. So our discovery day is called meet the pack, <laughs> uh, is typically about six to eight weeks um, of education about our brand, about our business model, um, validation is so important, right? Talking to other franchise owners that are already in the system about their experience, um, really looking at a territory map and understanding what does that mean? What does that entail? Um, we do work with funding partners. So if you need funding for your business, making sure that you've spoken with one of our funding partners and you feel secure in that, um, and then we arrange for that meet the pack meeting. Um, I tell people that if they've scheduled the meet the pack, that should be kind of a check mark, right? That's I am ready to move forward. Yes. And now I'm ready to meet the people that are going to support me in this journey. Yeah. Um, as the brand president, I meet all candidates in the middle of that discovery process because I want them to have a chance to meet somebody other than the sales guys um, and ask some questions and get to know somebody else on the team. Yes. And it also gives me a chance to evaluate the prospects and the candidates and, and give the sales guys some feedback on, do I think they're, they're a good fit for us? Because it is a two-way street. I want them to be successful. Yes. And I think that that's an important part of the evaluation process. Yeah, it, it's so important. And, and I, I was just telling somebody this morning that 
sadly, you know, when people interview for a job, they say all the right things if they're if they're well prepared. They can say all the right things, get the job, and they might not be right for the job, but they said the right things. And sadly, people do that when they're looking at franchises. They say all the right things, they become a franchisee, and then all of a sudden, they're not even managing their business like they said they would. Right. They, give their, they give their keys to a friend or a relative that doesn't have the same passion. So people oftentimes ask me, Danita, they go, Lance, why do people fail in franchise? So why do people fail in marriage? <laughs> right, there's a, exactly. There's there's a lot of reasons that people fail in a franchise if they're not paying attention, if they're mismatched. It, you know, it's always still about who's running the business, like you just described your number two franchisee and you know, and all that. So meet the pack day. Is that in Ohio or is that, that is, in that, Zoom? Yep. Okay. Uh so uh, you know, back. Back in the day, everybody came in for Meet the Pack, right? Um, today, we've all adapted to a virtual world. And so a lot of people do choose to do their Meet the Pack virtually. We'd love to have people come in still for their discovery day, for yes. their Meet the Pack. Um, but a lot of people do choose to do it virtually. But our training, they are required to be here in the office. They get a full week of hands-on training with yep. the entire team and all kinds of uh dog love and pet love you better believe it yeah so talk about you mentioned the validation talk about how how do you do validation so uh typically what we try to do is you know obviously with validation prospects can call anybody they want right i mean that's the way franchising works um, they're free to get on the internet, to, to look at our FDD and, and call anybody they like. We do try to connect them with somebody that has a similar background, right? Yes, that, I like that. Coming from a similar place in life or has a similar aspiration so that they have a connection place. And, and we do yeah. try to make those connections. Um Sometimes it's we're able to do it in a similar geography. Sometimes it's across the country, but but we try to do that so that we know our franchisees. We make those connections to people that they're going to have something in common with. Yeah, no, and I think that I think that's valid. I think that's a good strategy as well. But I I tell people all the time how important validation is. This isn't a process where somebody's sliding your credit card after the first phone call. This is a very structured process for every great brand. And clearly you're uh, you're doing a lot of that. And and I'm guessing you can make some money at Pet Wants. You know, it's uh, you know, you guys are expanding and growing, and uh, uh that's the beauty of franchising. So talk about to talk a little bit more about training. You mentioned about coming to training, and then let's dive into marketing a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you know, once somebody signs their franchise agreement, um, we typically have a four to six week onboarding period before they come to in-person training. And, uh, you know, some of that is just the nuts and bolts of getting their business set up. And, uh, you know, there are some licensing requirements in different states related to selling pet food. We want to, we have a nutrition manager on board that knows all the ins and outs, believe it or not, nice. of every state in the country. So we love know, it. Great um, resource. Absolutely. We know, uh, you know, what we need in, in every state and, and he can help the franchisee make sure that they're in compliance with all of those things. We have an onboarding manager that makes sure that they're getting themselves ready. Um, we do start their nutrition education in the onboarding phase because it's a lot to learn, right? And we I'm don't sure. want to shove it all at everybody in, the, in their classroom training. Um, and then they're here in the classroom for a week. And during that week, we are um, working on well, how do you have a conversation with somebody at a farmer's market, right? How do you have that educational conversation? We're role playing that. Nobody likes to role play, but you and I both know how effective that is, how yes. effective it is to just talk through that conversation and to, to practice it, right? Yeah, Where, and Danita, what you don't want at a farmer's market is somebody like me saying, how you doing? 
<laughs> right? You want to have somebody who can, can say, tell me about your dog and, yes. you know, do they have any issues? Can I help you with anything? Have they tried this? You know, what's how, what size is your dog? Well, then you should try this big old bully stick because it's, they can't destroy it. Like you need to be able to have those conversations. We work on their marketing plan with them. We teach them about how to use their social media to grow their business. We work on their business plan with them during training. And we they have to present their business and marketing plan to the team before they leave so that they feel confident that they're prepared to go out and start their business when they, when they go. Um, okay. So it's a really comprehensive week. And when they leave on Friday, we turn their website on and they are live and open for business. I love it. So just, you've already touched on marketing a little bit, but you know, when they, so when they get out of training and their website is live, you know, what, what happens? Are you doing, are you guys working on Facebook ads? Do you, you know, what, what are the, what are the, everybody talks about customer acquisition. If you watch an episode of Shark Tank, a lot of that pops up all about customer acquisition. Right. So in, in, in your franchise, obviously, there's going to be an immediate attraction. I would imagine local SEO. So people are finding you when you're a new franchisee and all that. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the, again, one of the benefits of being part of a franchise system, right, is that um, we provide them with a local web page that's part of our national uh, web presence. So they don't have to design or pay for their own web presence. Uh, we provide them with their own Facebook and Instagram pages that are tied to our corporate page. And we provide them with content for both of those social media assets on a weekly basis. We, right. we teach them and encourage them to add to it on a weekly basis from a local level. We teach their, their them, pictures. Absolutely. We teach them and encourage them to post live reels videos when they're at their events to post videos of their dogs of their pictures of of things like that we uh have relationships uh with constant contact we provide them with newsletter content to build their customer database so that they are sending educational material we are working on a national sms vendor relationship so they can do text campaigns we are uh just getting ready. I'm getting ready to blow this one. Um, my market VP of marketing is probably going to be mad at me. Uh oh, but, uh, wait, wait, so, wait. We have a scoop. Everybody pay attention. Nina's dropping here. a bomb here. Yep. We've got an influencer campaign that's getting ready to launch on social media uh, that we are awesome. providing for the entire system uh, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, and so, you know, we're really, we take our position as their franchisor very, very seriously in terms of what, what do we do for them at the national level and what do we encourage them and teach them to do at the local level? I love it. That is absolutely fantastic. This is so much good information. I think I want to be a franchisee now. Come on down. All right. So Danita, final thoughts, final words of wisdom for the audience. You know, I think what I would like people to really think about, because, you know, we've talked so much about franchising in general, right? And as somebody who has owned a business that wasn't a franchise, somebody who's owned a business that was a franchise, and now I'm on the franchisor side, right? So I've walked that whole journey, yes. is that um, franchising is, for to me, it is the path for people who are willing and capable of working within a system. They have to be willing to yes. work within a system. And if they are, it, is, it has the potential to build wealth for their family that they can either choose select an exit strategy at some point in the future because franchises are a, a a profitable functional franchise is a highly sellable asset at some yes. point in the future right or if you have a generational people to give it to right they can can join in and be part of the business um and it's so exciting to be an entrepreneur 
And it, it really is that opportunity to be in business for yourself, but you're not on an island and you're not out there on your own. And I remember those days when literally every single decision, I had to make it on my own. I didn't, I didn't have somebody I could call and run something by and say, what about this? Has anybody experienced this before? I didn't have a group of peers that I could call and say, has anybody seen this before? <laughs> and I, that's the one thing I want to say about the Pet Once uh, franchise system also is that this group of 100 franchisees um, has, is one of the most supportive peer networks that I've seen in franchising. Um, I, I've seen uh, mastermind groups formed within the peer network. Uh, I've seen other informal groups that meet on a regular basis. Uh, we're forming formal advisory groups within the, the network to really support each other. Um, and so between the support of the franchisor and the peer support, um, I, I just, I love franchising and I'm so glad that uh, I didn't become an attorney and I became a franchise <laughs> executive. Love it. Love it. Well, uh, you know, I love that you that you basically brought in that collaboration uh, of franchisees. That is such an invaluable resource. People think it's just the franchisor and their uh -huh. team, which is which is enough in most cases. But the collaboration with franchisees is invaluable. And franchising truly is a team sport when done correctly. It is. Danita Pet Wants, brand president. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lance. It's been great. My pleasure. Thank you very much for listening today. Please like, follow, and subscribe. This is Lance Gralick. Until next time.